Thank you all for being here. Um, I want to say a couple of quick words about Fuser and the brilliant team that has created the software. Um, Henry and his team is, is nothing short than a, a group of geniuses. The, the response level from his team is nothing that I've ever seen before. Um, I've made suggestions. I think a lot of people have, I'm going to touch on a couple of things people have said here today because we've all had experience with Fuser. Um, I've made suggestions to Henry, and he's turned around those suggestions in sometimes 12 hours. Um, the response level from the team is, is immediate, and they're nothing short of brilliant. And what they created is something that um, is helping to change the way that we perform in our industry, and changing in the way that we, uh, that we access our industry, and the way that we look at it. Um, and it's unlike any other product on the market right now, Henry has developed and built his own engine, um, which you can't do if you're not a genius. And um, <laughs> Henry's engine, and I'm gonna say something bold right now, but I think it's true because I've, I've done this a lot um, internationally, and uh, Henry's engine is probably the most powerful VR engine in the world right now. Uh, and I mean that very seriously. I've seen Henry's engine open files that other engines would unreal and uh, usually they, they wouldn't even blink at, they would crash, they wouldn't even consider opening, it wouldn't even be possible to open. And Fuser somehow makes it happen. And the reason why is because of the brilliance of, of Henry and his team. And uh, I think that they are uh, game changers in this world. And you're gonna see Fuser on every computer that you see Reddit in the future. And I truly believe that. Um, and they've given us this wonderful tool which I use daily to solve problems. Uh, because as you guys know, as architects and anyone else in this room, we have fires that we, we put out. In fact, I was talking to a colleague of mine who's here today who has turned himself as a firefighter at his old firm because he's always putting out fires. And it's true. Um, so how can we use Fuser as a problem solver? So what I'm gonna do today is a little bit unique and interesting. I'm gonna do a live demo for you guys. There's no slides on the screen. This, is a, this file is running live on my laptop right here. Um, and I wanted to show you an experience that, uh, that I had with Fuser that really helped solve some problems for, uh, for my team and for this project. Uh, this project that we're looking at here is uh, Burbank Town Center, and this is in Burbank, California. And um, basically there's this, main, there's this main plaza that we have in the project, and you can see the Fuser guy standing in that plaza now. And um, he, there was a concern from some of the team, sorry, my mouse. This plaza here is really important. If you guys know anything about Burbank, there was a really big move in um, the IKEA in Burbank recently moved. Uh, the, where the old IKEA was is exactly where this shot is right now. The new IKEA has moved down the freeway a little bit and it has become, it is now the largest IKEA in the United States actually. Um, so this area that has been taken over and opened up as a plaza is really important to the city of Burbank. There was a concern, though, about this area, and that is the architecture on either side of the buildings or either side of the plaza is creating a, um, potentially creating a canyon effect for the, the person who's hanging out in the plaza or the people that are hanging out in the plaza. And this space is meant to be energetic and full of life and people and markets and let's show a movie on the weekends and things like that. And there was a concern, and this went, this went on for, for four to six weeks, back and forth, right, back and forth. Um, <coughs> How do you explain to someone that isn't an architect, and take that out of the, the equation for a second, how do you explain to someone in general that there's no canyon effect? How do we do that? There's no prescribed diagram for that, right? I mean, in my head, I'm thinking, well, we'll cut a section, and then we'll put a guy there to scale, and we'll show some view lines from his eye, and that makes no sense to anybody. Nobody can understand what that means. There's a little guy standing there, and it doesn't solve the problem. So a series of diagrams were created, and uh, didn't solve any issues. A lot, of, a lot of emails went back and forth, and it wasn't solved. So I went up to the student director of the project, and I said, well, why don't we go to the mayor's office and put him in the plaza? And he could see for himself that there's no, there's no camera effect when we look up. So that's what we did. Um, I actually, before I had my laptop that's here on the ground, uh, I had my entire desktop brought up to the mayor's office in Burbank. I set it up, I put the mayor of Burbank and three of the five city council members in this project. 
the mayor literally put the headset on, looked around, looked up, took the headset off and said, yeah, it's great, put it down and walked out of the room. <laughs> this, is, this is two months of somebody's life just being solved in about five seconds. Um, three of the five other council members came in and did the same thing. And one of the council members actually quipped saying, this should be a requirement for all projects in the city of Burbank. Yes. VR. Mm -hmm. okay. VR. Why did he say that? Because the second he took those goggles off, because of Fuser and the experience and the rendering and the trees and everything that Fuser creates, he felt like he was there. And guess what? He really liked it. So what happened when it comes time to vote on that project? Everyone is there. Everyone's been there. And they throw their support behind it. So think about, think about the, uh, a small little exercise in trying to explain to someone the canyon effect and the sky. Think about the political work that happened there and all the political good work that happened with them going in we are exposing ourselves in the project. We're saying, you know what, we're not going to show you a pretty rendered picture. I'm going to let you go in and walk around. I'm not hiding anything from you. I'm not going to show you something that has eight layers of Photoshop on it that I'm not going to achieve in the real world. This is what it's going to look like. Do you like it? If not, we can fix it. And even more importantly, in Fuser, you can fix it live and on the fly because it's connected to your CDs. Now, this project right here is a SketchUp model. I'm going to duck behind the podium and load up another model. Um, this is SketchUp model, and SketchUp models aren't very intelligent, right? They just know that they have polygons, and that's it. This is a Revit model that is combined with an FDX file, and it's combined with a SketchUp file. So three files in here that are going to create a world that's going to load up. This is a project we have in LA. This is the Revit model building itself right now. Again, no demo. This is all live. Um, this is linked to the CDs, and then you're going to see the context come in, you're going to see the interiors come in. That's LA, and there's interiors. So, the reason why this was really important and this project was really important is because the client is really interested in view corridors. Because we have a project in the city of LA, and we're trying to understand, you know, what can you see from this project? What can you see from, from the environment? And so, if you need to do that in a high rise, because high rise really operate off of view corridors. And where my mouse is having some problems right now. I want to show you guys the context like that. It's not important to see me, it's not important to see the model. Here we go. So view corridors. So we wanted to put the, be able to put the client on the balcony, for example, out here, and say, what is the view of the balcony? What is the view of LA? What am I looking at? More importantly, what is the view if I'm gonna if I'm gonna live in this unit somewhere? Yeah. What is the view from my unit? Because there's an interesting transition that happens with VR, and that is that in architecture we design the buildings from the outside in, correct? No one is ever gonna design this casino starting with this room and then design the main entry. We start from the outside and we start with a big idea and then we whittle it down. And here though, when you apply VR, the demand is reverse. The demand is the building demands to be viewed from the inside out. So now what's missing? Everything out the window. Because the Revit model is, as everyone knows, floating in air. We don't build context with Revit models. It's not worth our time. It's not worth the effort. But now we need that context. We need that understanding of, OK, I'm going to spend some <laughs> amount of money on this unit. And it's going to be pretty expensive because it's new construction in LA. right? So I'm going to put some money down on this unit. What am I going to see when I'm washing my dishes, when I open my door, when I look at my window? How can you explain that to someone in 2D? You can't. They have to be there. They have to access it. And VR gives us that opportunity. It gives us the opportunity to, to not only access it, but, but change and edit it if we want to. So our job, my job as an architect, is to, is to clearly disseminate sometimes very complex information to people that don't understand it. Um, or if they do understand it, it has to be clearly done to a point where someone eventually has to be able to pick up this piece of paper and build this thing from a piece of paper. It's very hard to, to cover every aspect of the building in two dimensions. Um, so the example that I typically use for this part of my talk, which is really more about 
we are leveling the playing field when it comes to understanding all this data. This data is coming at us, there's a lot of it, and VR really levels the playing field. And that example is my mother. My mother is not an architect. Um, she has no training in architecture. Uh, she raised two architects, me and my brother. Um, my mother could stand in this room right now and tell you how she feels in this room. Just like anyone in this room right now. You can tell me how you feel in this room because you're standing in it and because you're experiencing it and yet everyone has emotional reactions to their own personal experience. So we can now, with Fuser, we can gauge and quantify that experience and we can adjust it and fix it in real time. So when the meeting's over, there's not someone going back to their desk and trying to crunch out a whole bunch of things that just talked about for an hour. It was done already. And at the end of the day, what you're, what you're really providing and what this technology, what Fuser really provides, is a, is a surety sort of an insurance against a very, very expensive proposition, which is building a building. These buildings cost a hundred, if not hundreds of millions of dollars. So the person, that's, the person that is, that you're answering to is your client, right? The client's a developer, the client is paying the bill, but who's paying the client? Well, if the client's not self-funded, then a hedge fund is paying the client. And that hedge fund is hedging its money. And when it hedges its money on projects like this, it wants a return. So if you can provide a bit of a surety, Against that return, you can say, hey, you can hedge 90 million here because I'm going to put you in the project. And at the end of the day, we're going to get rid of that term that we have in architecture, and it's called lessons learned. And lessons learned is a term that happens as a result of you not being able to see a project before it's constructed. So you enter a room, and so I'm the architect of this casino, and I walk into this room after it's done, and I say, oh, you know, this ceiling didn't really turn out the way I wanted it to. I had a whole different vision in my head. Somehow that vision in my head didn't make it to paper, and that vision never got constructed. So instead, with VR and with applications like Fuser, we can have the intended and the expected result of our design. Because we've been experiencing it the entire time, and we've seen it the entire time, and we've been correcting it the entire time, if you're using everything properly. So when it comes down to it, this new data that we have is scale. We're accessing scale, um, and our industry, the industry of architecture, predominantly operates out of scale. This building would, this room would feel a lot different if the ceiling was seven feet closer to us. If it was seven feet lower, this room would feel much different. Um, so that, that sense of scale is how we operate, and being able to access the scale is gonna change how we operate. So this is the future, um, and I definitely think Fuser is leading the way. Thank you very much.